Air-cooled engines were retired unfairly. They have plenty of strengths that many people don't even realize. But over the years, these engines became surrounded by so many myths and misconceptions that the truth got lost. In this video, we'll go through six of the most common myths about air-cooled engines and also find out why they have almost disappeared today. At first glance, the advantages of air-cooled engines seem obvious. They're simpler, more reliable, and cheaper to maintain. And the downsides? Almost everyone has heard them. Overheating in summer, no heat in winter, shorter lifespan. So it looks like the verdict is clear. Air-cooled engines were worse. But the truth is, the story wasn't that simple. By the early 1950s, engineers had already solved most of those issues. And right when Europe was moving from bicycles to small cars, air-cooled engines became a common choice. The VW Beetle, Citroën 2CV, Fiat 500, and Suprins all ran on them. And Porsche kept building sports cars with air-cooled engines all the way up to the late 1990s. In the West, they were a symbol of simplicity and reliability. But in Eastern Europe, their reputation was the complete opposite. That's because they were installed in the most unpopular cars, the Zaporozhets and the Trabant. These models were considered unreliable and unprestigious, and that bad image stuck to the engines themselves. By the way, I already have videos on the Trabant and the Zaporozhets. If you haven't seen them yet, check them out. Now, let's sort it out. What's fact and what's myth? Myth 1. Air-cooled engines overheat. In reality, their temperature characteristics can actually be seen as an advantage. Yes, air transfers heat less efficiently than liquid, but the temperature difference between the cylinder walls and the outside air is much greater than with a water-cooled system. As a result, the operating temperature of an air-cooled engine is more stable and less dependent on weather conditions. In hot weather, a water-cooled engine is actually more likely to overheat. Another key benefit is fast warm-up. An air-cooled engine reaches its optimal operating temperature three to four times faster than a water-cooled one. That means lower fuel consumption, longer service life, fewer emissions, and more convenience for the driver. Water-cooled engines only match this with advanced multi-circuit cooling systems in the 2010s. Myth 2. Air-cooled engines are bulky. At first glance, air-cooled engines might look bigger. Lots of ducts, shrouds, and a fan. But if you compare engines of the same displacement, air-cooled units are often just as compact, or even smaller. And it's not just about the engine itself. A water-cooled motor requires a radiator, water pump, fan, and hoses, all mounted separately on the body. An air-cooled engine, by contrast, is a self-contained monoblock. That makes it simpler and, in practice, often more compact. Myth three, air-cooled engines are unreliable. In fact, air-cooled engines often prove to be more reliable. Statistics show that around 20% of all engine failures are linked to liquid cooling systems. Air-cooled designs don't have those weak points. No radiator, thermostat, water pump, endless hoses or seals. The cooling fan and air ducts are mechanically much simpler, which makes failures far less likely. For the same reason, maintenance costs for air-cooled engines are usually lower. Myth 4. They are too noisy. This one is partly true. Noise is a real issue for air-cooled engines. Unlike liquid-cooled motors, where the water jacket walls and coolant naturally absorb sound, air-cooled engines lack that insulation. Worse still, the cooling fins on the cylinders and heads can sometimes amplify mechanical and combustion noises. Engineers tried to tackle this by stiffening parts, using split gears with spring loading, hydraulic valve lifters, and carefully chosen materials. Fan noise can also be reduced, but only with complex design solutions. Myth 5. Air-cooled engines have a short lifespan. In the early days of motoring, air cooling was treated rather casually. 
a big fan blowing on fin cylinders was considered good enough. The airflow was uneven, creating hot spots and local overheating. Cylinders would deform, piston clearances went off, oil coked and burned, and wear was often faster than in liquid-cooled engines. But engineers eventually solved this by designing proper airflow and balanced heat distribution. What's more, air-cooled engines have an advantage. Cylinder walls can safely run at slightly higher temperatures. An extra 15 to 20 degrees Celsius reduces piston ring friction, lowers wear and corrosion, and slows down oil oxidation. Combined with their much faster warm-up, air-cooled engines actually spend less time in the cold wear phase, which extends their service life. Myth 6. Air-cooled engines are weak. This belief has some basis. Under heavy load, cylinder and head temperatures rise quickly, heating the intake air and slightly reducing cylinder filling efficiency. But tests show the difference in volumetric efficiency between air and liquid-cooled engines is no more than 3.5% at 2,000 RPM, and it nearly disappears at higher speeds. In practice, engineers address this by raising operating RPM or using forced induction. As a result, the idea that air-cooled engines are inherently weak is largely a myth. They can deliver competitive performance when properly designed. At this point, a viewer may reasonably ask, if air cooling had so many advantages, why did even Porsche engineers, who built over 400,000 air-cooled 911s, eventually abandon it? The reasons exist, and there are six of them. Reason one, they are difficult to design. Developing an air-cooled engine requires solving a set of very specific problems. Each cylinder is separate, so engineers must account for wall deformations during assembly to avoid uneven wear. The most complex part is the fin surface of the cylinders and heads. Fins need to be thick and massive for effective heat transfer, but at the same time, thin enough to reduce aerodynamic drag. Engineers must calculate the exact number of fins, their geometry, and the airflow speed. On top of that come packaging issues with valves, spark plugs, studs, and intake exhaust ports, all while trying to minimize the power lost to the cooling fan. Liquid cooling avoids most of these difficulties. Water, with its high thermal conductivity and heat capacity, evens out temperature variations and removes much of the engineering burden. Reason two, limited potential for modifications and upgrades. Modern car makers and their marketing teams like to offer families of engines with different displacements and power outputs. For an air-cooled engine, that means not only recalculating airflow parameters, but also redesigning cylinders and heads with entirely new finning, each time requiring a full cycle of calculations and tests. By contrast, modifying a liquid-cooled engine is far easier. Increasing power often only requires changes to fueling, the water pump, or the radiator, while the block itself remains largely unchanged. Reason three, heating the cabin is more complicated. Air-cooled engines generate enough waste heat, but using it efficiently proved far more difficult than with a liquid system. Engineers had to add fins to exhaust pipes, wrap them in heat exchange jackets, and ensure that no exhaust gases leaked into the cabin airflow. Still, in harsh winters, this was often not enough. To provide real comfort, many cars required separate gasoline heaters. Complex, expensive, and difficult to control. In today's era of computerized climate control, this became a major drawback. Reason four, noise insulation challenges. We've already discussed this earlier in the video, so we won't repeat it here. Reason five, labor-intensive manufacturing and assembly. Another decisive factor in retiring air-cooled engines was their poor suitability for mass production. Each cylinder and head was usually made separately, with long, thin cooling fins that were difficult to cast. Often, they were two-piece designs, a cast iron liner with an aluminum fin jacket. Heads were also separate. As a result, assembly was complicated. Each cylinder and head was bolted down with individual studs, requiring extremely precise torque settings. This made air-cooled engines more expensive and less efficient to manufacture 
compared to water-cooled designs. Reason six, the consumer has changed. Or rather, manufacturers changed the consumer. Through marketing, people were persuaded that the more complex the engine, the better it must be. Even if it meant three coolant circuits, two thermostats, dual fans, an electric water pump, a plastic radiator, and a maze of hoses and sensors. It was still seen as progress. Meanwhile, the simplicity of a single fan and a set of tin air deflectors was dismissed as outdated. But you know what? I believe air-cooled engines will return one day. I can't say when, but they will. Perhaps when a new generation of uncompromisingly practical budget cars appears. Vehicles whose buyers won't want to pay for unnecessary complexity in engines, transmissions, and electronics. After all, the automotive world cannot live forever under the laws of marketing and technical illogic.